Joining us right now to talk Alibaba earnings and the president's uh, executive orders, Mitchell Green, uh, founding partner of Lead Edge Capital. He's an investor in China's uh, tech, including Alibaba and Ant Group, as well as other companies like Uber um, and others. Good morning to you. Morning. Thanks for having me on. Do you want to talk Baba first? Do you want to talk about what's going on with the politics of China? <laughs> they, they all relate in some ways. Either or. What what do you, do you let's, just, let's hit Baba first, because uh, at about 100 bucks right now, do you think it's fairly valued? What do you think is going on here? Look, it, it, relative to historical, it's fairly cheap. But when it, I think the first day of the IPO, it was around 90 bucks, right? It's amazing how big the company has grown over the years, yeah, where the stock is. However, all this stuff got hammered over the last 18 months. If you could burn to Tencent, Baba, Baidu, all these things. Numbers are pretty good. I think EBITDA was up 32%. They're also going to be, I think, you know, Joe Tsai and the management team, you know, Joe's coming back as chairman. Daniel, the CEO, is going to step in as uh, He's going to run the cloud computing group, right. which he's always been super passionate about. I think that's probably good for the stock. And, you know, a few months ago, they announced that they were splitting it up into like six different divisions. I think they're trying to they're trying to unlock value to get the stock higher. They think it's cheap. I mean, they bought back three billion dollars plus the stock. But how much okay, so now let's overlay the politics <laughs> to this, because that's a huge piece of this. So huge. If the Biden administration is now telling private equity and venture capital, you can own technology companies. What's to, effectively? or certain types of technology companies. What's to say that in a couple of months, mark your calendar, I don't know when, that somebody calls you up, or not even calls you up, you read, the, you read something come across the tape, it says, it, literally the headline, Mitchell, you got to get out. That's what do you think, what, what do you think that happens? Things, that's what do you think the chances are, are that happens? I don't think it's zero. Um, I think you, what you are seeing here, I think you're going to see more rhetoric, you know, the presidential elections are in the next you know, 24 months. You're going to see more rhetoric against China. We can't get out of our own way, it appears. I think, I think a lot of these, a lot of investors are nervous about that headline, and that's why these, these are companies are trading at the multiples where they do. Although, I just wonder if there's been at all a sentiment turn in China, where, uh, as Derek Scissors pointed out the other day, Chinese authorities for the first time asked companies, including tech companies, explain where you think your company has benefited society. And is that just cracking the door open to their understanding that they need to support these companies instead of, you know, fighting them, basically? I'm not friends with the premier, so I don't really know at the end of the day, and everybody is pontificating. But I do agree with you that there appears, if you look in from the outside, that the Chinese government does realize it needs these large tech companies in order to get out of the doldrums that it's in and grow. However, they can't stop the U.S. government. From, That's what I was going to say. Do you see anything that would actually change this particular dynamic that seems to be at play now? You, I don't think, I think you're going to hear more rhetoric coming out of the election from the U.S. government. I think you probably might see potentially less reaction back from China because uh -huh. uh, they need these big tech companies. But again, right. nobody can tell you the What's answer. What's your sense you of what up? at least seems to me to be a remarkable inconsistency, which is, is likely you're going to have these venture capital firms and private equity firms not be able to invest in certain types of businesses, and yet very similar kinds of businesses, or if in fact these businesses decide to go public or, or, or come to the public markets in some other way, that the same investors can get into them. That'll be interesting. The, the real question will be when these, you know, co these smaller companies that, that private equity or venture capitalists are in, can, can, could historically invest in, right. in China, if they do go public in Hong Kong or in the Shang, you know, exchanges, will then the U.S. government then tell you you can't own the stock in right. them? What's to say that you can't own the stock in Alibaba? Do you understand the, um, it, let me ask it this way. Is this theater to you or is this real? Because what I can't figure out <laughs> is it's not as if we are going to starve these companies or capital, of capital and that they don't have access to capital from other places in the world. That's 100% correct. It's not like the Europeans or other people, people in the Middle East aren't going to come and fill the void and invest in these great companies. I think it's a lot of political theater, personally, but uh, and I think it's coming across both both sides of the aisle in the United States. Here's the reality of it: we need China as much as they need us. So we, why we is the how to get along. why is the investor community not more vocal on this issue? I think they, I think they are behind the scenes. Some of the lobbying organizations in Washington are I think are probably pretty pretty vocal on this stuff. It's a, t it's a tough right. issue. And I think that, that, that is why these stocks trade where they are. Right. But the other piece of this is, you know, I know actually a lot of venture capitalists and private equity guys, and by the way, hedge funds and others who say investing in China has always been not only a very risky business, but even when things go well, it's not always clear that you can get out. 
Yeah, I've, people have said that for years. I first invested in Alibaba, I think around $6.75 a share back in 2011. Okay, so you have and, the, and profit. I, and, you have and, the and, profits and, to prove it. Profit. And I will tell you, back then, people would have the same kind of reaction to China as you're getting now. So, so there's always been a but subset of people. But the stock market overall peaked in 2007. It has, in general, been a terrible investment. So yes, you have They're to right. be really selective well, about well, what well, to pick. Well, think about it. I mean, Alibaba, I think, went public when it's $68 a share. It's the pop to low 80s, I think, day one. If you were a retail investor exactly. and you bought the stock day one of the IPO. You're up $10 yeah, it's been a horrible, how it's many a horrible years? IRR. Yeah. A horrible IRR. OK, is there a company in China that's available on the, the markets here in the U.S. that you like? We think, I think Alibaba is a really interesting business at these prices here. I think it's cheap. I think there are risks that you highlighted. I think an incredible company that's obviously in the news around all this regulation, I'm surprised they haven't gone after this, is ByteDance, right. which is a huge investment. Incredibly, the yeah. Well, how do you think that ByteDance has managed to sort of? <laughs> I mean, ByteDance has been in the in the headlines, and yet people it, love TikTok. Well, yes, but also you would argue that's an a. I mean, that's an algorithm, AI driven. Remember they were talking about banning TikTok right. too. No, I think it's because if if they owned came in large out, part by private equity in the U.S. By the way, correct. Uh, if they were if they were to ban TikTok. I think mo the millennial would generation outrage. would would like literally would start voting. Rage against, yeah, they would start voting. They would Correct. start voting. If you want the millennials to vote, do that. Well, I, and I, I'm ki I kid you not, I think that would do it. I think that's probably one of the reasons. Right. I think a huge amount of this has become highly politicized, and it's going to ramp up right. even more into the election.